we thought we would show you our sourdough bread on the road. A very simple uh, neo-peasant hack. So we've got, we travel with this little uh, plastic container, so it's light. And we have a filled three holes into the top to let air through. I don't know if you can see that. So that usually gets clogged up with, um, with starter. Every uh, night we cook off the uh, our sourdough um, starter. It usually has three good sized flatbreads. So you can use any fat um, on fire. We've just been collecting um, wood along with the beach. So it's really just cooking them off. So we do, as I said, about three or four uh, in the morning and three or four at night. And in between, we uh, mix them. So we're gonna show you at the end of cooking them off, um, how to mix them up. But really it's just flour and water into a toothpaste-like consistency. And to get it started, just flour and water and leave the cap off uh, for about three days and the airborne wild microbes will will make it into a starter. So if you're active with your starter, if you have a relationship with your starter, um, you'll know what to do. You can't really kill it, but if you just sort of leave it for ages, especially when you're traveling without a fridge as we are, um, you know, things will start to go wrong and you'll get mold in it. So you, basically you, you'll need to uh, start again. A relationship with a starter like this to make these sort of flatbread or crumpet, uh, sourdough crumpets on the road um, is not only quick and easy, it just means that it's incredibly affordable to have good quality bread on the road where in many parts of Australia you just can't get good quality bread, certainly at neo-peasant prices. So yeah, you can uh, cook it on fire like this when, when we can have a, a fire. There's also lots of muni municipal uh, barbecues that we pull up into a town and, and cook, cook them off. We're also traveling with a little Trangia um, a fuel stove. So it, yeah, look, it's, it's just a very quick and easy way to, to have nutritious bread. We bought our sourdough starter from home, which is uh, about 10 years old. Um, we dry it out, uh, dehydrate it um, into little biscuits which we give to people when, when they want to get their own going. But it really is, uh, that will just save you a day or two. We use rye or spelt uh, for our uh, starter. It's, it's a really, um, the rye is the most active starter we've had, but it's particularly if you um, have freshly ground uh, uh, flour, it's much more active. Once the wood has burnt down to much more coal than flame, um, that's a really good uh, time to cook on. You know, this is a really good temperature here. You can see once the bubbles start to come up, well, it's almost time to flip once a few more bubbles come up. And this is lovely and light and aerated. So it's got lovely lift in it. been quite a cold day today so often when it's warmer we're still coming out of winter so um, on the warmer days it's been double the lift for about um, 15 20 cents for a flatbread uh, it's pretty good going yeah, so I'm just going to remix. So the three flatbreads, I've got one, two, and one uh, cooking. And basically I've got rid of most of what's in there. So it's really just the remnants of the, um, of the starter. And then I'm going to just fill it up and show you that 
um, toothpastey sort of thickness. If it's too wet, uh, a starter won't activate very well, particularly in this fast turn on over um, that we wanted to. We want to be able to cook morning and night. And as the temperature warms, as we move into summer, we might even have to uh, cook it off three times a day, which will be fine as well. Sure will be. <laughs> And if you're traveling by car or bigger means, you, you know, you could have a much bigger starter than this. And if you had more family members, that would make sense. But for us, three uh, humans eating the bread, Zero's not really a bread eater, more of a rabbit connoisseur. Um, this is working for us, three flatbreads in the morning and three flatbreads in the evening cooked off. And then that's two flatbreads each for lunch. getting still quite thick so I'm just going to add a little bit more so I do it about three quarters full uh, which gives it room to breathe and every now and again I just push through the holes because sometimes they just dry up and the whole thing explodes so I'll just get my knife. Want to just quickly turn this flatbread here? Yeah. Right. Thanks Mark. So you can see the bubbles that's about Time to turn. Just put some more fat over the bottom. Delish. Yum. And yeah, just to pluck out those holes and make sure they're unclogged so the whole thing can breathe. And then we just put that in a little bag just so it doesn't explode everywhere in, inside our food panniers on the bike. And then well, actually, overnight, we'll just leave it out. And what's really great about this method is that microbes change depending on where we are. So while our starter came from home, it will no longer be the full set of home microbes. It'll be microbes that we're of the country, of the indigenous country that we're traveling in. So at the moment, we've got Gundi Jamara uh, starter from country.